Okay, energy. Um, let's talk about the different units of energy. All right. Uh, energy is basically the ability to, to produce heat or to do work. If you were in a physics class, it's usually to do work. That's usually what people talk about. Work has its own meaning. We're not going to really talk about it. But it's really to produce heat, I guess, if you want to talk about it in, in in this class. Um, and there are two um, units for energy. One is called the joule, named after scientist. And the other one's a calorie, which we have all heard of calories. Okay. Um, when you talk about a food calorie, just to kind of give you an idea, this is like what a food calorie, one with a capital C, one food calorie is equal to um, a, kilo, a, a thousand calories. Okay. But a calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. If you need these conversion factors, I will supply these conversion factors for you. And basically, it's just a form of energy. All right, the calorie that we have on the back of food is basically a kilocalorie. So when you read, you know, on the back of a, a Snickers bar, you know, 300 calories. All right, in reality, it's 300,000 calories. You know, small calories. You know, now thinking about it, you you'd be like, oh, you know, because imagine if on the back of the Snickers bar you saw 300,000 calories, you'd be like, uh, yeah, that's a little too many calories for me to be eating right now. All right, um, but uh, the calories you see are kilocalories. Our body needs a kilo amount of calories in order to eat it. All right, so these are just some conversions. We we talk about cows and joules all the time. This equation is the specific heat equation. You know, honestly, we're not going to really do too much with it. I think it's an interesting equation because it, it it kind of explains a lot about heat and specifically with materials. If anyone wants to go into material science, you deal with this all the time. OK, Sp the specific heat is basically the amount of energy is needed to increase the temperature by one degree. OK, of one gram of a substance. So imagine I have one gram. Let's say I have one gram of water. All right. Let's say I have one gram of iron. OK. How much energy Q is energy? How much energy do you think is required to heat up a gram of water by one degree? So let's say the water is at 25 degrees Celsius and I want it to go to 26 degrees Celsius. How much energy do you think is needed to increase it by one degree, one gram of water? I mean, one gram of water is is a milliliter, one milliliter. Think about a milliliter, okay? You know, in your mind, you're like, well, probably wouldn't take that much at all, right? I mean, I would imagine not much at all. Now think about a gram of iron. Imagine I have a gram of iron and I'm changing it one degree, 25 degrees Celsius to 26 degrees Celsius, okay? Well, um, I'm here to tell you, <laughs> water has a very high specific heat. High, I'm gonna put SH, specific heat. Okay, all right, well, it's great. What does that mean? That means water can absorb a lot of heat before it increases by one degree. Okay, water can absorb a lot of heat. That's why, you know, if, if uh, on a very, in the summertime, people like to go to the beach or they like to go to a lake house. They like to go somewhere where there's a big body of water. Well, why is that? Well, it's cooler there, right? Well, why is it cooler? Well, it's windy. Yeah, that's true. But it's, uh, but it's also much cooler. The reason it's cooler is because the water is absorbing all of the heat out of the air. It's able to actually absorb tons and tons of heat because it has a very, very high heat capacity. Metals, on the other hand, have a very low heat capacity. All right, very low heat capacity, okay? Or very low specific heat, I guess we can say specific heat. There's also a concept called heat capacity, which if you take Chem 111, you'll, you'll learn about it. Um, but it had very low specific heat. Well, why is that, okay? Or how do you know? Well. Imagine if you um, like took like an iron rod and you put it out on a hot day and then you went to go and touch it. It's very, very hot. It does not take a lot of heat to heat iron up. All right, it gets hot very, very quickly. Very small amount of heat and the, and the iron gets hot. Okay, water on the other hand is the opposite. 
it can absorb tons and tons of heat uh, before it actually feels hot. All right. You know the old analogy, a hot pot never boils. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A hot. That makes no sense. A watch pot never boils. All right. That's because it takes so much time for water to heat up. OK. Um, I don't know if you have this kind of oven, but uh, I'm sorry, stove. There's a lot of stoves that have the coils on top. All right. It ha has these iron coils on top. I think they're iron. I'm not exactly sure what the metal is. All right. So, you, you, you know, it has all these coils on top of the uh, uh, on top of the stove. And then as soon as you turn it on within what, two seconds, it starts turning orange and red hot. All right. Well, that's because the metal has a very low heat capacity. I right, think about this. These metals get glowing hot so incredibly quickly. You turn it on, electricity runs through it, and boom, it gets hot. It's because it has a very low specific heat. On the other hand, you put water on top of this thing, and you are sitting there for you know a half an hour before the thing boils. All right, that's because the water is able to absorb all of that heat. All right, and that's basically what we're talking about here. That's what specific heat is. All right, it's the amount of heat needed to increase the temperature by a degree. All right, notice water has one of the highest numbers. Look at all of the metals, aluminum, gold, graphite even, uh, copper, iron, mercury. Look how incredibly low these specific heats are. All right, ethanol is about half that of water, all right? Um, because ethanol will boil a lot quicker. It doesn't take a lot of heat in order to boil it. Um, but uh, look at these metals. Specific heats are very, very small, all right? So if you look at these units, that's a joule, that's a unit of heat divided by grams per degree Celsius. So it only takes 0.9 joules, which, you know, it doesn't really matter what 0.9 is, to raise the temperature uh, in, order to, in order to raise one gram of something by one degree Celsius. Where water, it takes four times the amount of energy, all right, maybe even five times the amount of energy to heat up one gram of water. And that's basically the understanding I want you to have of specific heat. Just kind of understand what these numbers mean. The smaller, the less energy is needed to heat it up or to boil it. Uh, not to boil it, sorry, not to boil it, uh, in order to get it hot, in order to change the temperature. Okay, because obviously it takes a lot more energy to boil gold than it does in order to boil water. That's not based on the specific heat. All right, uh, let's talk about some physical changes. Um, so solid, in order to go from a solid to a liquid, you obviously need to add energy. There isn't anything special here, okay? In order to go from a liquid to a solid, you have to remove energy. Nothing, uh, you know, amazing about this, all right? Um, but they want you to kind of know these words. There's melting. Melting is obviously from a solid to a, um, um, a liquid. It's also called fusion. That's also a term. Uh, you know what? Don't even worry about that. Don't worry about fusion. So the transition from solid to liquid is melting. It's also known as fusion. The reverse process is freezing. I am assuming you already know that. Okay. Um, these are fancy words that explain that. Endothermic process. All right. An endothermic process means that uh, you have to add heat you have to put heat in so in order to melt something you are doing an endothermic process you're adding heat into it exothermic means it releases heat or it gives off heat so you need to understand these terms endothermic means heat you're adding heat how i remembered it is endothermic has an n in it so it's heat in in has an n Exothermic has an O, I guess so does, uh, well, actually, you don't have to think about that. I remember uh, EX for exit, heat exit, meaning heat is leaving. It's giving off heat, all right? Vaporization is from a liquid to a gas. That's vaporization, all right? Condensation is the opposite, liquid to, I'm sorry, vapor to a liquid is condensation. Finally, sublimation and Deposition are probably terms that many people have not have heard of. You might have heard of sublimation, but deposition is the opposite of sublimation. Sublimation is where you go from a solid directly to a gas. Okay, so like carbon dioxide or dry ice, dry ice sublimes at room temperature. Okay, it goes from a solid to a gas. It skips the liquid phase. 
okay? Deposition is the opposite, where you go from a gas to a solid. That's called deposition, okay? So sublimation is transition from a solid to a vapor. The reverse process is called deposition, right? Sublimation is endothermic, right? That makes sense. You take dry ice, you put it out at room temperature. It's absorbing heat. Heat's going into it. It's turning into a vapor, all right? And deposition is the opposite, all right? Um, I believe this is just the summary of all of that. Um, yeah, this is the summary. Solid to liquid is called melting. All right, also called fusion. All right, going from a liquid to a gas is called vaporization. Going from a solid directly to a gas is called sublimation. All right, this is the reverse process. Deposition, like we talked about, from a uh, uh, gas directly to a solid. Condensation, gas to liquid, and freezing liquid to solid. All right, uh, that is pretty much it. Very quick chapter, um, and I will see you in class.